Let's get right into it. Nvidia is one of the world's most talked about chip makers in the whole world and its stock has just recently split four to one. It's the market cap leader in gaming GPUs. It's top tier GPUs process AI tasks for data centers and driverless cars and its ARM-based CPUs power gaming consoles, set top boxes, and servers. There's just so many things to like about this business, and it also benefits tremendously from Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market rising as well. But listen, the question is, is the stock fairly valued after the stock split? Is it a buy right now? And more importantly, for some of the option traders that watch my channel and are subscribers, I have a trade for you that's 7% return opportunity in just a week on NVIDIA later in this video, so you're not gonna wanna miss this. Before I jump in and flood your pockets with money, make sure that you smash the smash button for Uncle Henry. That's all I ask, and subscribe to the dopest YouTube channel. You guys already know I deliver that value and I keep it 100 with you. All I'm trying to do is help you guys grow your portfolio to the next level. And I do wanna say, if you want some personal help, daily trades and coaching, you can book a free call with my team to learn about the Weekly Option Income Academy. And with that being said, let's jump into Nvidia. Stock splits are some of the most interesting things that happen in the stock market. Tesla and Apple had a stock split and a lot of investors were going absolutely wild before they split. And as soon as the stock split happened, well, Tesla had a major pullback and Apple did not do a whole lot. So what you guys have to understand is if there's one thing to take away from the stock portion of this video, it is that a stock split makes the shares cheaper, but it doesn't affect the valuation, the market cap, or financials of a company. This is a psychological phenomena, and investors see a cheaper stock price, so they think, well, hey, this stock must be a better value, but no, that just isn't true. And I do have to agree that the stock is easier to trade now, but it's not cheaper in terms of market cap. But I'm still bullish on the stock and I have ideas of where it's going to go next. The business is rapidly expanding and Nvidia has seemed to dominate headlines more frequently than pretty much any other chip maker stock lately. Its proposed purchase of Arms Holdings has been something that investors have needed to digest. Nvidia agreed to buy Arm Holdings, which is one of the world's largest chip designers for $40 billion from SoftBank, last September, and ARM doesn't manufacture any chips, but it licenses its designs to chip makers like Qualcomm and Apple. ARM-based chips now power over 95% of the world's smartphones. So if Nvidia buys ARMs, it will support the development of current ARM-based CPUs, including Tegra and the data center-oriented Grace, and other new CPUs. But this acquisition won't close anytime soon due to antitrust probes, opposition from rival chip makers, and a lengthy legal battle against ARM's China's CEO, Alan Wu, who is refusing to resign even after being kicked to the curb. These are some of the reasons that the stock has had some tremendous momentum along with, of course, the global chip shortage. NVIDIA outsources the production of its chips to Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, Therefore, the global chip shortage, which started before the pandemic but was exasperated by the crisis, will impact its ability to meet the market's demand for new chips. During last quarter's conference call, NVIDIA CFO Colette Kress warned that it would remain supply constraints into the second half of the year. Analysts still expect NVIDIA's revenue to jump 49% this year thanks for robust demand for gaming and data center GPUs, but its growth rates would likely be even higher if it weren't facing a global chip shortage. This chip shortage isn't going to continue on forever. I don't know how long because I'm not a genie in a bottle and I can't predict the future, but if you think about it, NVIDIA is crushing it with a shortage, so imagine what NVIDIA is going to do without a shortage. Another component of NVIDIA you need to understand is their relationship with the crypto market. When cryptocurrency prices surged back in 2017, many miners hoarded NVIDIA's gaming GPUs, which resulted in a market shortage and higher prices for PC gamers. But when crypto prices plunged in 2018, those same miners pretty much sold their used GPU cards at a lower price, which flooded the market with excess inventories and curb demand for NVIDIA's newer GPUs. Earlier this year, NVIDIA took proactive steps to avoid another bubble by having the hash rate or mining efficiency for Ethereum in its new RTX gaming GPUs. It also announced it would launch dedicated CMP, which just stands for Cryptocurrency Mining Processors, products for miners. 
Unfortunately, miners quickly circumvented Nvidia's anti-mining measures and dumped them amid China's cryptocurrency crackdown and an upcoming tweak to Ethereum, which will make it impossible for traditional GPUs to mine the cryptocurrency for a profit. Nvidia does depend heavily on cryptocurrency pricing, which is both a good thing and a bad thing in the general crypto market. I'm going to tie this factor into the option analysis I do later and show you guys why I'm selling call credit spreads. Nvidia's four to one stock split today has attracted attention from investors who previously thought its shares looked too expensive. That's why it's such a good time to trade options on Nvidia. In theory, splitting Nvidia stock could attract some smaller retail investors who don't wanna pay $750 for a single share, but most trading platforms, including Robinhood, already offered free fractional trades so you shouldn't really expect Nvidia's stock split to send the stock to the moon. Just like a split didn't do that for Tesla or Apple back in late August. With that being said, let's jump into my screen so I can show you guys some option trading that I have for you. All right guys, I got a big trade coming for you for Nvidia stock and specifically, this is actually the fourth option that I've opened on Nvidia Four weeks in a row, the first week we made 6%, 7%, 6%. Those were all trades that I posted in the private group. And this is actually the fourth week that we're executing on Nvidia. And again, we collected over 5% per week. And so far we're up $15. And I'm gonna explain to you guys exactly what I did and exactly what I've been doing on Nvidia stock over and over again to make five or six or even 7% of returns per week. And specifically, it's called a call credit spread. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna do some technical analysis on Nvidia. And then after I do the technical analysis, we're gonna do some option trading. All right, guys, so we're gonna take a look at the technical analysis and we're gonna look at a few specific things that really help me decide where a stock is trading at in relation to its history. And the first thing I wanna look at is moving average. And specifically, I'm going to be using the 60 day moving average. This gives me an idea of, hey, where is Nvidia at right now and where was Nvidia at on average for the past 60 days? So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Bollinger Bands. So as you guys already know, I've mentioned Bollinger Bands a couple of times on this channel already. Bollinger Bands really help me understand where a stock is likely to trade within in terms of the range going forward. And because I know what range is likely to trade within, it gives me a very good understanding of where I wanna sell options. And specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a call credit spread. And I wanna know what is the upper range for where I can sell that strike price so I don't end up getting hurt. So I can actually end up collecting that weekly income. So taking a look here, guys, Nvidia has had some consolidation in the past, but then we had that huge, and I mean massive run up. And I mean, it's gone up tremendously. So it was at $140 and it bulled up all the way. I don't even know if bull is a, <laughs> bulled up is a word. I just made that up. It bulled up from 140 to over $200 per share. And again, we see this interesting pattern where you see a double peak. So there was a double peak around $205, $206 per share. And that's where I'm very comfortable selling call credit spreads because you guys can clearly see we're at the top of the Bollinger Band range. So this orange line, this orange um, little area here that's highlighted, this is the Bollinger Band range. So the top of the range is around $205-$206 per share. And now actually Nvidia is trending lower towards the bottom of the range. And this is not surprising after you see such a huge bull uh, movement upwards. So now Nvidia is actually retracing back to maybe this level of around $181 and actually quickly want to scroll down. I want to look at the RSI. The RSI here is around 45, give or take, maybe 46. So in that area of 45, 46, that means that Nvidia is currently trading within the range of about what investors would expect. So we're neither overvalued nor are we undervalued. Again, if it were to go down to 171, which is where the moving average comes into play, if it were to be 171, I would be a buyer of the stock because it's retracing back to where it's been for the past 60 days. So I would love to get in at around 171. However, obviously the stock is at 185. And on the top of the range, it's 205. So you guys have a very good understanding that in terms of buying the stock, I would love to buy it around 171, but obviously 175 would be phenomenal. And on the top of the range, over 200, I think it's just a little bit overvalued at that point. So right now it's about where it should be. And in terms of a price prediction short term, I think it's going to have some sideways action, which is where selling options is going to be very profitable. However, in the long term, I do expect Nvidia to continue with the momentum. I think it's going to retouch the tops of over $200 per share. So 
Let's jump back into Robinhood now that we have an understanding of where Nvidia is likely to be traded. As you guys can see, I have a trade that is placed at $205 slash 206.25 for the call options. That is a $125 spread right there. And for that spread, we've actually collected a total of $23. So $23 divided by $125, you have an over 20% return. So actually guys, what I realized and why I was a little bit confused, and this is very interesting to study here, and the reason why I wanna actually call out one of my mistakes in this video right here, is that it's actually $125, but the reason why it's such a weird spread when I was looking at it, I'm like, I could have sworn I had a $500 spread, and in fact, I do, because if you guys notice here, because the stock split, actually the options split as well, so now there's four contracts, um, and obviously four times $125 is a $500 spread. So I actually collected $23 on 500, which is about that 5% return that I was talking about, not 20%. That 20% makes no sense. I was like, there's no way Nvidia options are that profitable in just a week. So again, going back to what I knew, the return actually was about 5%. And because Nvidia options have split, if you owned one option, you now own four options. So guys, what I actually wanna do is I wanna place a real live trade and show you exactly what I would do if I was going to open up a new call credit spread. And in fact, I don't mind doing that because Nvidia is a good stock that I would love to have more call credit spreads on, specifically because I think we're gonna be having some sideways action. I don't think Nvidia is gonna really reach, let's take a look back at the chart. I don't think we're gonna reach 196 per share again. So let's see if we can make some money off of the 196 level. If I go to sell call, okay? And I'm not gonna go for July 23rd because there's just not that much time. So I'd rather open up July 30th. Let's see what we can work with for July 30th. And goodness, this is very strange. As you guys can tell, all the strikes are now really wonky. I mean, you never see a strike that's 186.88. Again, it's because of the stock split. So, um, <laughs> oh, that's a pretty weird amount of numbers. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to trade the 190. No, 190 is probably too close. Let me, let me open up the 190. The Delta is 40, so no. No, heck no. Too, too high of a delta, guys. When you're selling options, you wanna go for a lower delta. Way, 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 too, 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 too high. Sorry for being a weirdo. Uh, 195, let's see the delta here. 0.27, guys, is pretty reasonable. How we're, however, I'm probably gonna go a little bit safer because we saw 196 was the level I really wanted to be around. 196.50 because that's the middle of the Bollinger Band. So let's go for around 196.50, 196.88, guys. Oh, that is, that's some interesting stuff. I'm just gonna go for 197.5. Just be super safe here. So let's open up that. We're gonna sell the 197.5, and we're probably just gonna open up a $125 trade right here. It just makes the most sense. I could probably go for a 250 trade, right? I can go for the 200. And that, that actually looks good to me, guys. I'm gonna put $250 at risk and um, sell, so I have to buy this. And if you guys don't understand, I'm probably gonna make a whole video on call credit spreads. Essentially, you're opening up one option, right? And then you're opening up a second option that's a little bit further out of the money. So I'm collecting more premium on the 197.5, right? I'm gonna be collecting $159. And then I'm going to be covering and closing my position, basically, so I don't have that unlimited risk. If you sell call options, you have unlimited risk. I'm going to be buying the 200 call option. That way I close off, right? Because even in worst case scenario, Nvidia goes to a bajillion, bajillion dollars. Um, my 200 call option will protect my 197 and a half call option from an unlimited risk. So you basically close off that trade and the difference of capital that you really need is just $250. The 200 bucks minus 197 and a half, that's 250 bucks right there. And um, you're collecting the difference in terms of the premium. So I'm selling 159 and I'm paying 117 here, okay? And the difference is $42 for, oh, that's such a good trade, $42. And by the way, your max loss isn't really 250 because you're collecting $42. Your max loss is only really about $208. So let's just call it $40 of profit for $200 worth of risk. 40 divided by 200, that's a 20% return. So I guess I wasn't lying. You can make 20% in just what, like seven trading days here. So let's open that up right now, guys. That's a fantastic trade, about 20% return. Um, let's just open this up. I'm just gonna do one, one of these. And um, 
I'm gonna put 0.39 because I really wanna get executed and not waste your guys' time because if I put 0.4, then I have to wait for it if it doesn't get executed. So 0.39, let's see. Boom, guys, we made $39 on $211 worth of capital. So basically about 20% return and a single trade in seven days. So if you guys don't like this trade, I really don't know how to make you happy because 20% return and a little bit over like seven days or even if it's eight days, what does it matter? That's such a huge return. You can get so wealthy trading options. So guys, let's wrap up with the video. If you do wanna learn how to produce consistent weekly income and create cash flow safely without taking a lot of risk or waiting impatiently for a single stock to grow, then definitely check out the link in the description to the brand new Option Income Academy, where I go over my option calls, picks, and plays in real time, breaking down my full thought process. You will also get very hands-on access to me and my team of six and seven figure coaches. Click the application link below to see if you qualify for some free training. And as always, guys, be aggressive in learning, but be safe investing. No one ever sees me, sees me.